Hello, and welcome back to Empowered the Podcast. I'm your host, Linda Brand, and I'm so glad you're here. Today's guest is a bright light. She is a podcast host. She is a mother of three, a wife, a coach, a singer, and a songwriter. She is so much fun to talk to. I'm really excited for this conversation. Welcome, Kara Lee Garrison, to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So tell us what's going on. I know you just came back from a retreat. I'm super excited to hear all about that because that was like the first time you traveled in a while because you're a mom. Yes, I did. It was incredible. It was so great. Tell us where did you go and what was it about? Yeah, so I actually just finished a mastermind to do something called keynote concerts, which is where you speak on stage, but you also sing. I'm not sure how much of the video is going to be shared, but I have a lot of music notes in my background because as you said, I'm a singer songwriter. I, one of my favorite things to do is to sing and perform for people. So when I found out that I could combine my love of music with speaking on stage, I was immediately all in. And so I joined this class for the last six months. We've been learning how to combine this, how to speak on stage and then sing. And it's really incredible because when you add the music to the storytelling element of of a keynote, it really drives home the message and adds so much power to to what you're saying to people. And so the kind of capstone of this mastermind that I was in was our retreat. And I got to fly out there. And it was actually the first time I've ever left my kids and my oldest is 13. So that kind of puts that in perspective. And it was just really incredible to get to spend this time with this group of people that I've been hanging out with online for six months and to get to know them even better and just to feel so much love with them and to feel so seen and just it was a whole group of musicians all together and we sang and we danced together we just had a blast it was so much fun that's amazing I love that you and I met through this women's community the spiritual powerful women's community so tell us what is that that keynote speaker and songwriting is that or song singing is that also spiritual are they also like in that spiritual realm? yeah oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, it wow. was women and men so there were what we had was a, oh, nice. actually a really really diverse group of people which was really incredible to have such a connection to such a wide variety of people um, oh. but we meditated and we you know we talked about you know how money is spiritual and and you know, yeah. it was, it was so, really a, a truly incredible experience to to be oh able to talk goodness. openly about, you know, spirituality and God and higher power. And our we were all very different people from different walks of life and with different religious beliefs. And yet we were all united in this, you know, desire to bring peace to the world, especially through music and speaking. And we all come from we all have difficult stories and we got to share those stories with these little mini keynotes that we got to share with each other. And to there's, I love this quote. Um, it was originally attributed to Mr. Rogers, but I think someone else actually originally said it where you, when you hear somebody's story, you can't help but love them. Mm. And it's just, it's so true. And so we all got to hear each other's stories. And even though we'd been meeting for six months, it was like you listen to somebody's story in person and you can just feel their soul as I love tell that. you about things that they've been through. It oh, was... I love that. And we're all connected. Like I just mm-hmm. had um, Mitzi Campbell on my show and she has a podcast called Blossoms. Yeah. And she said every, she falls in love with every one of her guests because of yep. the story they tell. So it's exactly what you just said. So we're going to talk about money today because you and I have something in common there. And we are definitely going to dig into that because it's a juicy conversation. And I am just super excited to talk to you about money mindset and, and money and all of that because- well, is- and- we had powerful experiences at this retreat around money that we can dive into. And yes, I sure. might just, you know, cry my eyes out because it was absolutely- mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So 
you're a mom to three kids and tell us, and then you have the podcast Seeking Sunshine that you just rebranded and to Seeking Sunshine and how does it go? Do what, Do what lights, lights you, you up. up. Yes. Do what lights you up. And you are just a ray of sunshine. You just shine when you speak. You're always smiling. Always. I don't care what's going on in your life. You're smiling. And I love how you're showing up lately. You're just doing it. You're just a, a, a force. So tell us what shifted that had you just say, I'm doing this. What happened and what actions did you take? Yeah. So it's, it's been a whole journey. It's been a whole journey. And Ah, so all three of my kids have special needs and I hit this moment where I was like, I have all these dreams and all these ambitions. And if I wait for this magical moment where my kids, you know, grow up and leave the house and then I can just do what I want and I can live my life. Wait a minute. That's never, that's never going to happen because so my oldest and my youngest that are 13 and nine, they are high, they have high functioning autism. But then my 12 year old who's in the middle is severely autistic and type one diabetic. And I was like, he's, he's always going to live at home. He's never, he's never going to leave the house. And we have moments like today where I was like, okay, if I'm not smiling, I'm crying. <laughs> he, uh, he smashed another window this morning. Oh. Um, and this is the like sixth major thing he has smashed in like two months. So this is the second window he smashed and he's smashed several mirrors. And How TV old is he? And... How old is he's, he? He's 12. Okay. Yeah. And, and then uh, boys, I mean, even if he yeah. wasn't special, it's mm -hmm. like special needs. I mean, it's like boys are high energy mm -hmm. and then that yep. age is such a challenge. I mean, I raised a son, I have an adult mm -hmm. son now, but it's like, children, you know, they're, they're, and I mentor boy with, you know, big brothers, big sisters, and it's just, you know, they have energy and they are at that age in between, right? They're not an adult. They're not a child. Just saying there's hormones. There's a lot of stuff. Yes, happening. So hormones, you know, it's, it's just, but I, it's yeah. frustrating for sure. I totally yeah, have to and to have, you know, a 12 year old's body with all the hormones, but the mentality of a one year old and the ability to comprehend of like, you know, a, a one year old. So mm -hmm. he doesn't understand. Oh he's, my goodness. He doesn't understand what he's done. He doesn't understand, you know, to not do it again. Like he, he really just yeah. doesn't understand. And it's like, how do you yeah. teach? Do you have support not... groups for women, for, for parents like this? I mean, or maybe, you're I mean, there's some one. online support, but in our current situation, we don't have a lot of like hands-on support. Like we're actually currently, we don't have any therapy. We don't have any, Yeah. we don't have yeah. parents around. We like my parents. Yeah. Like we don't have any grandparents around. We yeah. don't have pretty much. It's just my husband and I, um, and he's amazing. So I'm, I'm so grateful that, that he's with That's me and we're wonderful. a team on this. Um, but I had this moment where I realized that like my son's never going to leave the house. And if I want to, you know, live my dreams, if I want to do the things I want to do that, that light me up, I have to figure out how to do them now as a mom with my son now. And so like my big dream was that I always wanted to be a singer and I, it like burned in my soul. I wanted to sing. And I had these, you know, I, I would dream of being on stages and it was like, well, wait a minute. I'm a mom. I can't just be gone every single night, like singing on stage. Like I have to be home with my kids. Uh, this seems impossible. And so for about a decade, I tried to put that flame out because I was like, I can't, I can't sing. I have to be home with my kids. And it, it hurt. When it did hurt you, when did you so have much. the desire to sing though? Like how old were you? Like, when did you know that you wanted to be a singer? I'm just curious. Was it before you had the kids? I had my first solo when I was eight. So I've been dreaming of being on stage since I was really little. I've been writing songs since middle school, I put my first YouTube video out when I was about 16. I started voice lessons when I was a kid. I it's been a it's been a longing in my heart since awesome. forever. And it's then you been, and your husband like do stuff yeah. on you you together. Mm -hmm. Does he sing yeah. too? Yeah, my husband's oh. also a singer songwriter. We actually both studied opera in college. Uh and hopefully how you it won't be too long. Is that how you two met? 
Kind of. He actually walked up to me in the dining hall, the freshman dining hall at college and introduced himself. And then we got married right after that. And music that. was something we had in college. common. Oh, I love that. That's yeah, beautiful. but we love singing together. And it's it's definitely a common dream that we have. But as you know, parents, it was like, how do you get to do that? And so I tried to like not I was like well that's impossible I can't do that and so I tried to not and so I would just sing at church for like Christmas and Easter twice a year and I was like well that's got to be good enough because that's all I get right except for it it hurt and I would have these like meltdowns like often I would, I would just find myself like you know sobbing to my husband of like I want to sing this is not enough for me like I, I want more uh, and I and I graduated college and had all these things. And I finally, it, it was a whole long journey, but I finally ended up back in a songwriting class and I learned how to write my own music. And now I actually write music from home. I have my own studio here in my basement. And I write custom songs for people from home with my kids around and I don't have to be on stage every night and I get to do the thing I love and be mom and be home and I and I love it and I have my podcast Seeking Sunshine and I get to share my music on my podcast and I write music for other podcasters and it's been amazing as I've opened myself up to the possibility that my dreams didn't have to look the way that I thought they did, they could adapt mm -hmm. to my life. And so that's now what I'm trying to teach other moms that you get to be your best, most amazing self right now as a mom. You don't have to, you know, burn your life down. You don't have to flip everything upside down. You get to be you. Yeah. You get to be an amazing mom. And you get to be all of you right? and live your dreams. And they might have to adapt and that's okay. You still get to show the world what you're made of. You get to stop playing small. You get to be all of you as a mom. That's amazing. Because you're also offering free coaching on Wednesdays, correct? Yes. And that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. I do group coaching calls every Wednesday. That's amazing. And then the podcast, Seeking Sunshine, Do What Lights You Up. Is that interviews? It's solos or a combination of both? And who, yeah, are, your, it's a who are your guests? Who are your guests? It is a combination of both. I have a lot of guests who are moms that are doing what lights them up because my goal is to show you what's possible. I want to show moms that it is totally possible to do the thing you love and also be an amazing mom. It's not one or the other. It's possible to be both because we and. need more examples of that in our lives. We need examples of women who are stepping into their power and being incredible moms and you know living with their highest power like worshiping the god that they love in whatever way that they feel like like showing up in every part of their life not just like making lots of money and then their family life sucks right like showing up in every part of their life because that's what actual success is it's across the board it's not having an amazing family but being dirt poor it's it's all of the areas exactly. of our lives and yeah there's mess there's mess all over the place there's mess throughout of it nothing's ever perfect but it's when we can show up authentically across the board and not throw wrenches in the way because we're upper limiting ourselves. I just got to finish reading Gay Hendricks book, The The Big Leap. If you've yeah. ever read it, it's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. Uh, and he talks about, you know, when you have an upper limit problem, you tend to do really well in one part of your life and then you trash the next part of your life because you can't handle having so much success. And so it's when you, what real success looks like in our lives mm -hmm. is when we're allowing everything yeah. and it's a lot wants. of its mindset right so i mean yeah. we're abundant beings we're all limitless and it's 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 all programs and mindset because we can 
like you said, we could have all this money and then still be in scarcity and lack and fear or still be, you know, alone and, you know, lonely, you know, where yeah, like I'm over here in, in Florida and I'm in an apartment and it is like a luxury hotel and, you know, someone can be in their, you know, $700,000 home and still be in fear and lack and scarcity around things yeah. or I, I love my own company and I'm attracting in my soulmate or, you know, a, a good a date. And I'm just, I'm allowing, and I'm really just getting clear on what I desire and just enjoying the ride. Like, how do you help your clients that are stuck, that are feeling like imposter syndrome and, you know, they want to do these things, but they're having the self-doubt, right? Self-doubt is the worst thing that we all experience as human beings. How do you help them with that? And then we'll get into mm. that money, money talk that we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Oh, so many things. Oh, so self-doubt, self-doubt comes in waves and it happens to all of us. And you cannot forget that it happens to the best of us. It happens to those people that you admire too. And if you pay enough attention, they will tell you that because it's really easy to look at the people who you love and admire, the people at the top who are doing all the things that you want to do. And, you know, we easily get jealous of them and we're going, ah, you know, right They're They're living the life I want to lead. Right. But if you pay attention to them, they will tell you that they are also afraid that they aren't good enough. They will tell you that imposter syndrome sneaks up on them too. And what happens for me is it comes in waves. And when I pay attention to that, then I can be like, oh, there's another wave. And if I just wait, it'll, it'll pass. Right. Everything's it will temporary. come and it will go. And I can just be like, oh, I'm in a low point. And if I can just wait it out for a few more days, I know that it won't last forever it's just a dip it's just a dip and it will go and it's fear lying to you do you feel yourself thing. what do you do do you do you do anything to like help yourself love on yourself you know what actions do you take to help get out of I mean you know you can notice the thoughts and realize yeah. you are not those thoughts and just you know is there any anything you yeah. do. And I love to hear your personal spiritual practice too. Cause I always yeah. ask, I guess that I love to ask that, what do you do? And especially as a mom of three kids and then a, a wife, and then you're doing all these amazing things, your podcast and your songwriting, how are you taking care of you? I love it. <laughs> so music helps me so much like prayer. I always, you know, taking that time to like, is you have to make sure that you know the difference between like prayer and meditation and that you're putting them together. Because when we are praying, we tend to just be like, okay, God, everything's horrible. Everything's wrong. Listen, 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 listen. Everything's terrible in my life. Why am I sucking so bad at life right now? And nothing's going my way. And actually that's great. Get it all out. First of all, he can take it, right? Like, don't worry about upsetting the big guy. He can take it. But also don't forget to listen because that's what's actually going to help you is the listening part. And that's where the meditation part comes in is the actual like sitting. And I find that the music helps me so much to, if I'm just like sitting and like hearing somebody at like a guided meditation helps me to sit. And what I really love too, is to go back and listen to like songs that I have written Mm, um I love that. in the past because I really processed a lot of my heavy emotions while I was writing those songs I find that I that's how I work out a lot of my trauma and a lot of my junk is through writing songs I it's like therapeutic for you like yeah, I love that you said that because I literally listen to my own podcast I listen to my own yeah you know, I did a meditation that I, a guided meditation that I recorded and I, I'll listen to it last night before I went to bed. I listened to my own meditation and it's just, it's, it's so cool. Like, yeah. you know, or 
like my interview on this other show, Applied Wisdom, like I was listening. I'm like, we could sell this freaking podcast episode. It was so juicy with so yes. much content. So yeah, I love that you listen to your own things. Creativity is so therapeutic and we don't give ourselves enough credit for how creative we are. Like we tend to think creativity is only in the like physical hands-on making stuff, which I am all for. I love the physical hands-on making of things for processing emotions. Like go stick your hands in some Play-Doh for 20, 30 minutes and tell me it doesn't help you work out some of that anger. Like that will help you so much to just go. I mean, we it, it can help to go do some dishes. It can help to go, yeah. you know, go clean your house like that. We all like a lot of us naturally gravitate towards like all right I'm angry I'm gonna go clean something yeah <laughs> you ever the doing that in yourself yeah. I the like doing but like I like making stuff in the kitchen it's yeah it's just, it, it, and then you feel good because you're like I just created something you know yes. it's just it's fun and it's also where you're present you're being yes. present when you're well, doing those you're solving a problem that has nothing to do with like the big things that you can't solve in your life at the moment. Yeah. Like this whole existential, I'm not good enough. I can't make the numbers show up. Like instead you're like, I'm going to, I'm a sewer, right? I, I studied sewing and fashion design in college. So it's like, I'm going to sew something. Like I can make this fabric do the thing. I can solve the problem of putting the needle in the thread. I can do the thing. Like I can make the thing happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found. Um, because in addition to having three kids with special needs, my husband's actually also been disabled for a decade. And so for the last 10 years, he's doing much better now. Uh, but for a decade, I was his caretaker as well. And so what really helped me the most in those 10 years where I was carrying him to bed after he collapsed mm. was making things. Mm -hmm. I made things and I didn't realize what I was doing, but I was constantly making things and I had uh, you know people telling me like that it was a waste of time and I didn't need it but I needed it it yeah. helped me so much yeah. to like find that area where I could have control in my life where I felt so out of yeah. control and it's like if you can do that in a way that's actually productive instead of in a way that's unhelpful because our you know our natural tendency as humans is to do that in a way that's not healthy so yeah. if we can pour that need for some semblance of control into you know making something yeah yeah and even your son when he you know like he probably needs to be doing something more like whether it's playing a sport or something with his hands right to like help out yeah, we we <laughs> usually have him clean up something like okay we usually be like oops we dumped out this bucket of legos now you need to clean it up and yeah. that when he's yeah. really frustrated because that's the level that he can comprehend is yeah pick it up put it in the basket he actually yeah. hates sports but he that's where he's really great it's like oh now i have a task that yeah. i can do and so that's my usually my advice to his teacher is like give him something to do Dude. that is simple and that's what we all you need. can feel good about. Too. Yeah, we need something that we can easily accomplish. We need to give ourselves a quick win. Yeah, absolutely. When we're feeling like our whole world is crumbling around us, we need to give ourselves a quick win. And if that's making a loaf of bread or and, if and, that's. And, yeah, and I think celebrating the wins, right? Yeah. It's really important. So tell us, yeah. let's go to the, the money stuff. And mm. then you can share your spiritual practice. So what um, I had a, an epiphany not too long ago with the money stuff when uh, I was listening to something and I just detached and decided I'm giving this way too much. It's just my programs, right? Yeah. So I always tell on different shows, I always talk about how you don't brush your teeth once and you're good for a week. You don't work out once and you're fit. It's a, it's a thing, right? So I feel the same way about the money mindset because you can like do all the work and realize, you know, and, and, and work on your mindset, but if you, it's still going to creep in that subconscious stuff. 
right? Yes. So tell us what changed for you and how did you heal your money shit? Because I know you're yes. dealing oh, with Oh, uh, yeah. I've been working on this Wait, a lot this year. For so I'm going to start with the beginning of this year. I chose a word for the year, which I've never done before. This is the first time we've ever done this. And I chose it for the whole family, but no one really cared except for me. So it didn't really matter. And the word for the year I chose was fearless. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was about money. I decided to stop being afraid of money. And what this really was coming from was a, a decade of poverty, a decade of my, my husband's been disabled and unable to work for a decade. Now we're sitting at almost a year of him being able to work. But at the beginning of the year, he had only been at this job for, I don't know, a few months. And we were really, I was really worrying as we were stepping into this new job and losing all of the programs mm -hmm. we were on. And it was, I actually wrote a song about it called, yeah. I know, because that's what I do. I process all my emotions through music. And I wrote a song called Precipice. And it was about standing on the edge and taking a leap off the edge of this cliff of like if he gets a job right. what's gonna happen to us we're gonna lose instead of saying everything. wow he's gonna make money and it's like gonna make everything it's, better yeah it was like wow he's gonna make money and it's not gonna be enough for us to live on right and we're gonna lose story. this yeah, yeah and it still is not enough for us to live on right like well, that's it's yeah. it's been a very tedious, but, you know, thing, and so I I decided to stop being afraid of money I at love the that. beginning of the year. I decided to stop being afraid, and so, I invested in programs to grow. That's amazing. And which was scary because we couldn't really afford it. And I had never really invested. I mean, I I was a college student forever. <laughs> <laughs> but investing in in this personal growth was like really scary because there weren't student loans that were covering it show yeah. up the thing is you made a decision and that's yeah. the main thing it wasn't the decision but it was but yeah. you made a decision so number one you were self-aware you decided and you decided I'm going to be fearless when it comes to money. And then you invested in yourself and your growth. What better thing yeah. to invest in than yourself? Yes. So tell us what's next. So then what? Yeah. So over the course of this year, not only I invested in multiple classes for myself, I have grown in absolutely unbelievable ways like I have I'm a different person than I was at the beginning of the year just Same. hands down I'm a different person it has been the most tremendous amount of growth it's unbelievable and we did this exercise at the retreat where we were we separated into pairs and we spoke to each other as if the other person was money and so I addressed this this woman as if she was money and I was supposed to tell her how I really felt about her as money. And I, and I told her and I said, you've really disappointed me. I've worked, I've worked my butt off my whole life for you to be here. And you weren't there for me. And I, and I went on, you know, for a couple minutes and then we, we went and talked about it and then we came back and talked to her again. And it was supposed to be, you know, what's going to change. I was like, all right, um, I'm just going to trust that you're going to be there when you're ready to come. I'm going to set the seat at the table for you. I'm going to make sure that there is room for you. And I'm going to trust because I realized that my problem was that I stopped trusting, stopped trusting because I had been expecting and it wasn't coming and I stopped, stopped trusting. And so I, it was really, it was really powerful. And we, um, Tiamo is the, the person who ran this retreat is the person who run, does these keynote concerts. And he's, he told us about his friend who came for his 
big, huge birthday party and she's like a millionaire. And she gave him this book and he opened this gift. And after she gave him the gift, she said, I have, I have a question for you. I have a favor to ask of you. And he was like, yeah, anything. And he, she said, would you and your family let me live with you for a month if I lost all my money? And he was like, of, co of course. And she's like a millionaire, right? And she's going, thank you so much. I've asked all of my friends this, and now I have three years of friend equity. So I don't have any worries about money or losing money. Because that's the thing with people when they, people always worry about money. Even if they have money, they worry about losing it. So she's going, now I don't have to worry about money at all because I have three years of friend equity. I have three years of places I could stay. And so he had all of us stand up and raise our hands if we would be willing to host our new friends that we were just meeting in person, if we would be willing to host them at our homes for a month, if the others went broke. And it was easy for me to say, absolutely, I would love having you guys in my house for a month. But I broke down in tears. <laughs> At the thought of imposing my family on somebody else for a month. Mm. And uh, I'm very bright and sunshiny. And my normal presence in a room is very me. And as soon. So what did that tell as, you? Oh, it told me a lot about myself and as soon as I was not me anymore as soon as I was uh the new trying year. to as soon as I was trying to hide this fact that I was <laughs> like sobbing it was really obvious to everyone even though I was like I wasn't loud um and like we took a break and somebody w tried to talk to me and I was like don't talk to me and then they talked to me and then I sobbed <laughs> Like they were like, oh, let me give you a hug. And I just burst into tears. Um, and I like sort of pulled myself together. And then like, I couldn't, like I couldn't pull myself together. And then we we met back up and we were sitting there and I was not doing a very good job holding myself together. And, and Tiamo noticed that he, and he finally was like, and he spoke to me about it later. And he was like, I was having this debate in my head because I could see that like you were not yourself anymore. So finally he like called me out and he was like, like, tell us what's going on. And I, and I finally just like broke down and they just like immediately, like somebody immediately came up behind me and hugged me. And like, they immediately just like wrapped me in so much love. And like some, one of them was like, I have an extra house. You could stay at my extra house. And they were like, mm. it doesn't have to look that way. Like yeah. you could pay your rent or we could do whatever. And it was like. It was, turned out it wasn't so much about the money for me and that I had deeper self-worth as, as much as, yeah, as much as I have, you know, money blocks and money issues, it turned out I had other things I needed to work through. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's true for all of us. Absolutely. Maybe our money issues aren't really about money. Maybe it's really about us feeling good enough and imposing ourselves on other people. It's all connected, girl. It's all yeah. connected. The worthiness, the money, yeah. it's all connected. Well, um, and what I learned was just like, there is so much love available to us. And when we're really authentic and when we really like, sh like allow ourselves to be seen, because it's not. Yeah, when we really allow ourselves to receive it and to be seen, there are people that love you in all your mess. There's so many. And 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 it's all the time. Like the love is it, it, strangers are loving and kind. People want to help. 
people want to. It's like the gift is in the giving, girl. I mean, it's so yeah, it's, it's so, so true. It's so true. It's when you, you know, just when you realize like what the real meaning is in the whole like exists, like being here, you know, what are we here for? What do you think we're here for, Carolee? We're here for love. We're here to learn how to get out of our own heads and just love each other. Yeah. Yeah. Learn and grow and serve and give. Absolutely. So let's see, tell us about your self-care and your spiritual practice. And then we'll talk mm. about where we can find you because I have to wrap it up. Yeah. One of my favorite things that I did on this retreat was I went to the movies by myself because I my flight landed Friday at noon and then we our retreat didn't start till Saturday morning. So I went to the movies by myself and it was so good. So, so good. I got to go see the Marvels. And That's what I was going to say. What did you see? Yeah, I saw the Marvels, which had just come out that day. It was so good. I totally recommend it. Um, But it's self-care. I, I love talking about self-care being doing what lights you up. But self-care is so much about like paying attention to what you need and then uh -huh. doing it. Yeah. And the more that you pay attention, the more you're going to realize how much you are giving to other people instead of yourself that's called people pleasing and yeah. the more that I dive into this whole self-care thing the more I realize you know because there's a time not that long ago where I would have told you no I'm not a people pleaser but it turns out I am super duper 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 a people pleaser we all are we all are, <laughs> we all are. it's like a huge problem to what you yeah. actually want yeah and it's you're giving not... other people what they want instead all the time it's not selfish it's it's actually necessary to be the best mom the best wife yeah. the best you know coach human is, yeah, yeah exactly so do you have a, a ritual that you do in the mornings or the evenings at all like um, you know, a meditation practice or any of that? My thing is that I do my hair and my makeup every single morning without fail. Like since I was a teenager, like I spend an hour doing my hair and my makeup and that is a non-negotiable. It does get interrupted frequently because <laughs> I do have little kids, but like I, that's, that's a non-negotiable for me. It doesn't matter if I'm getting up really early. It doesn't matter. I'm doing that. I also have added in that I read a couple chapters of my book every night before I go to bed. And I'm working with family members to respect my book reading time. Good. Better Good for you. At night. Uh, but it does take, you know, working with those, you know, who love yeah. you and those are, so what are you are around you. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Well, I just finished Be Seen by Jen Gottlieb and it was so good it just came out like a week or two ago and oh, it was sweet. so good and now I just started like two days ago this is marketing by Seth Godin that is amazing yeah is there any spiritual leaders coaches mentors books that had a huge impact on you that you'd like to share with the audience so many I've loved Brene Brown I love I always love Kathy Heller I mean I think she was one of my first like bring it on home like favorites there's so many it's you have to find the person that really resonates with you because different people just resonate differently like right. I like there's some really popular like books and podcasts and people where I'm like they just aren't my favorite yeah you have to find the and maybe they are yours and that's amazing so you mm -hmm. have to find the person the podcast that like podcasts are amazing I love podcasts so go listen to podcasts you've got to find the one that lights you up you've got to find Absolutely. the one that resonates with you the one that makes you feel good tell the us one that makes tell you us a better. couple books that um that made a big difference in your life well let's see some I think the, you the mentioned the surrender experiment to me before. Oh, yes. I love the surrender experiment. That one was so good that I like made my husband go read it like right after I finished it. Let's see. What's here? Oh, this one was so good. Worthy Human oh, yeah. by Tracy Litt. <laughs> oh, so yeah. good. Yeah. And I just finished listening to her last podcast episode. She's 
of just May. incredible. Yeah. Um, What's her have... podcast? What's her podcast? Her called? podcast is called it is called The How of Within. Okay. The yeah, How of Within. She's... Well, we've given a lot of good tips good. to the audience yeah. today. So Gina every... DeVee's also good. Oh yes. I tell everybody about Gina DeVee's book, The Audacity to Be Queen. Tell us where people can find you and follow yeah. you and listen to your show and everything. Awesome. So my show is called Seeking Sunshine and my website is caroleegarrison.com. And on my website, you can find all of the things because that's where all the things are. So on social media, it's Carolee Garrison on Facebook, Carolee.Garrison on Instagram. And yes. Seeking Sunshine. Podcast. And we'll have, we'll have the links in the show notes and it's Carolee, yeah. K-A-R, a L E I G H, correct? K A R A L E I G H. Yeah. Yes. Kara Lee, L E I G H. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also my album is Seeking Sunshine as well. Yes. So that's you everywhere. have an album. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yep. And that was this year that you. Um... Yeah. So my Seeking Sunshine album came out in May. And then I actually have a Christmas album that came out last Christmas called Wonder. Oh my goodness. So much to celebrate. Beautiful. Beautiful. Keep, keep shining. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.